Today is July 23, 2011. My name is Tanya Fincham along with Julianne Nicolasian. We're in Chelsea, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. or Adair? Adair. 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 Mays County. Right. <laughs> uh, to do our Centennial Farm Project, and we're with the OSU Library, the, the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. And today we're with Steve Hall, Gaynell Hall, and Kay Lyon. Lyon. So thank you for having us into your home today. Mm -hmm. Let's start by having you tell us a little bit how the family initially came to have this piece of land. Do me tell it? You go ahead and tell it. <laughs> uh, my husband's grandfather, uh, he was at Fort Scott, Kansas, and he met Kate uh, Parrish. Rogers. Rogers, and uh, they were married and uh, they were, he told her one day, he says, if I married an Indian, I could get some land in Oklahoma. And he, she had never told him that she was Cherokee. And whenever she did, why well, she said, we can, because she was Cherokee. So they came down here. He had been down here before and knew what piece of land that he liked. So they came down here and he plowed around, what he could plow around twice in one day and then they went to Tahlequah and claimed it. And that's how they came here. <laughs> and then every time they had a child, they would plow around another section of land and uh, go to Tahlequah, which was a two week trip, uh, wagon and horses and uh, claim their land. Mm -hmm. So how many acres in the initial? He had eight sections, so. eight, about eight quarter sections really went because they had six children and he went around for each one of them. That's a pretty large acreage. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is most of it still in the family today or? No, no. This is the only piece that's here today. And this belonged to, uh, this was their allotment. But my husband's mother and her husband bought it from the other children when, it, when both the older ones died. And the rest of them all went to California. Mostly. <laughs> I could say in particular why, but we can, we can kind of guess, guess that, I guess. So the initial, the, uh, the first family had six children. Mm -hmm. What Do you know what the early crops were or pro products? Uh, he farm? had fruit trees mostly, I think. Uh, James South did, the, his grandfather. And uh, I don't know what else he raised. Now, he, uh, do you? I don't know what he raised, but he rented the pa the land out to the other farmers around. Because he had been injured in the Civil War and he couldn't, I think he did quite a bit, but then he couldn't do some things because he was shot in the shoulder and it never healed properly. And we're sitting in one of the original structures for this the This is the original part of the house. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, there's an upstairs and there's a basement that is the same size as this room. They had no kitchen in the house. The kitchen was out out there where the pump is. And because Mr. South wanted his boys up and dressed and go to work as soon as they ate breakfast. So, and uh, this part right here was where there was windows here at one time and that's where they went down into the basement. Now we go in off over here. But, uh, um, see, I don't know too much more about the house, actually. That's their original chimney over there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you were telling us what the, what the yeah, walls the wood, were? the woods are one by four tone groove oak. And do you know if they were gathered from the farm here? Or I don't know. I don't else? know. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they were or not. Mm -hmm. The basement was for the cellar for canning? Yes. Canning goods and mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming they had a large garden too? I, evidently they did. <laughs> because the basement is the same size as this room. Mm -hmm. Were there so. any other structures? Um, well, of course they had their kitchen out uh, south of the house here. Um, I'm sure they had a smokehouse and we do have a picture of one building out here to the east that it's not there anymore. And, uh, 
That was mm. basically for the horses. The, yeah. And that was later. Yeah, that was later. Uh, when Clint and Connie lived here, the doctor from Adair would leave his horse here as he and change horses as he had to go on a call. And then come back and change his horse and go back to Adair after mm. the call. So. And who were they? You mentioned Clint and Connie. Connie was James South's youngest daughter. James my, my husband's and, mother and dad. So there's six boys? No, or there, there boys? was uh, just two girls one there. there no, were, there were uh, three. More than that. There were actually four girls. There were actually eight, eight kids. Because uh, uh, James had been married before and had children from a previous marriage. Uh, not all of them came to Oklahoma that I can find out. I can't prove that all of them came, but uh, but uh, James and uh, Kate had uh, six children, I believe. I was just but, curious if all if just the boys had to get up and go to work. Oh well, I don't know. <laughs> Connie being the baby, you know, she probably didn't have to do much. <laughs> yeah. um, and then back. I don't. Most of the kids were born here, weren't they? Or did James, they had uh, James and uh, Kate's children were all born here, yeah. I believe. Yeah, they, they were born here in the house. house. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. My husband was born here in the house too. Uh, James died here in the living room. They he went through gallbladder surgery and he died during the surgery here in the living room. So the surgery was actually here in the yeah. living room. Uh -huh. This, this used to be, a, this was a hospital during uh, the flu epidemic. Like the Asian flu back uh -huh. in the late 19, and, uh, late 1910s. They, um, they had people upstairs and downstairs, and if anyone died from upstairs, there's a, there used to be double windows upstairs, and they would take the bodies out through the windows, so they wouldn't bring them down through the living room. That's where uh, Grandma South died upstairs mm -hmm. with the flu. She had the flu. And, uh, they took her out. The windows up there. Different times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other interesting stories attached to the house? Uh, my husband had a cousin that would, used to come here and visit. He said he could remember Grandma South sitting on those stairs over there smoking her corn cob pipe. So, <laughs> but my my husband, he didn't know his grandparents at all because they died before he was born. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the second generation that had the farm, did, what did they do for their living? Uh, they had a dairy. They had the first grade A dairy in Mays County. Okay. And uh, that's how they got through the Depression, was because they had a dairy and the rest of the kids all went to California. And uh, of course, uh, Crandon Hall, Clint, he uh, raised. Uh, I remember him planting corn and oats when we were first married, and uh, he always had a great big garden. Well, I was wondering if you could think of anything else. <laughs> did, did the dairy have a name? Uh, no, I don't think so. Don't remember it. Mm -mm. I would think that I should probably ask what what is the farm called today? Just South Hall Ranch, I guess. South Hall Ranch. <laughs> yeah. What's the total acreage today? We have about 125 acres here. Uh, actually, it's a quarter of the section, less the turnpike. Oh, they took some of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I guess that's a touchy subject then. No, yeah. no. I really think it helped them a whole lot because, I mean, you know, they didn't have much money. But, and of course, they got paid for their land. So I really think it helped them. And then the, the third generation? Uh, Very yeah, and you. <laughs> yeah. We moved out here in 1974 after Merle's dad passed away in 73. His mother went to California to live. And this is the only place she had ever lived in her life, except for a few years in Chelsea. And uh, we just had cows. Was, and mostly what we did. And then uh, we had an antique shop for a while and we re restored furniture, antiques or whatever anybody brought us. And, um, but my husband worked in Tulsa 
at, for oil companies. Yeah, so. Supplemental income. Yeah. Like the farm was. <laughs> well, I think he did that to have something for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the, your his parents did had they had supplemental income too? No. Was there all mm-hmm. just the farm? That was just what they got here. Mm-hmm. His dad was in World War One, and he had a little bit of a pension because he was wounded. But uh, you know that wasn't enough to keep them going. But they seemed to make it okay. Where would the children have gone to school? It's South Branch. And about how far is that from here? About a three quarters of a mile. You, we, you went past it down there Walking on the corner. Walking distance then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. South donated the land for the school down there. So then your children didn't necessarily grow up <laughs> no, no. living here, but they visited here. I don't know if um, they grew up mostly in Tulsa, and we lived in Atlanta for a while, too. But they went to school at Adair, graduated high school from Adair. Mm-hmm. Well, Steve did- still works for the school, him and his wife both. And uh, Kay, she works in Tulsa for Spirit, and uh, she graduated from OSU. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, when you decided to come back here, was it a hard decision or was it just something you always did uh, you do at some point? No, uh, it wasn't anything we really talked about. Um, we just, after his dad passed away, his mother was going to California and we just decided we wanted to buy the farm from her, so we did. <laughs> well, did he have siblings? Yes, uh huh. They all live in California. So, so they weren't interested in. Said they were. Uh-uh. So he's the youngest, and so, and he had no relatives here, but he did have no desire to go to California, so we just came out here to live. <laughs> Does he have um, memory, or did he share memories of, of visiting the farm or living on the farm himself? Oh, yeah, he loved to talk about it. That's why I got the letter about doing this. I thought, I didn't know whether I wanted to do it or not, but I knew he'd be absolutely thrilled to death. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll share a few, a, few, a few of the stories you remember. Oh, uh, I remember him talking about riding the horses and going through the barbed wire fence with them. And, uh, uh, oh, how they had to haul water so much because they didn't let electricity here until 1947. And that was after they sold the dairy. So they had uh, gasoline milking machines. And, um, oh, I don't know, he always said he didn't want a dairy. That was too confined. <laughs> uh, Talk about chores that he had? Um, I don't remember him saying too much about that, you know, but I know he had chores to do. And I'm um, assuming there was an outhouse? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any yeah. stories about that? Yeah. Mm. So he would have slept upstairs? Uh, yes. Uh, All the bedrooms were uh, up. Well, now, I don't know. In the olden days, I guess most of them were upstairs. There was three bed. There's three bedrooms upstairs. And one of them, uh, I know, was Merle's, and I guess uh, his sister and brother probably slept up there, too. But his, of course, his mom and dad had built onto this house a lot. And they had uh, two bedrooms downstairs. And... Uh, course they they slept there I don't you know I just don't remember him ever talking too much about when the kids were all here at home but, uh, of course they heated with wood and um, cooked on wood and we've got the wood cook stove in the kitchen in there so um, did his mother quilt no. some not a lot uh, I can I can remember uh, her and Merle's sister making some quilts, but they didn't hand quilt it like we do nowadays sometimes. Uh, and when they would mm. take their products to market, would they, where would they take them? To uh, Adair or, or other than that? Uh, so we went to Adair. Adair a lot. Uh, Adair think. Co-op had it there. I've got a book at the house that shows where they sold all their eggs and milk at, at Adair. And that's about how far from here? Seven miles. Mm-hmm. They had a um, big um, uh, sale barn at Pryor. I can remember Merle talking about going there because 
he liked to eat their hamburgers. And he got the nickname of Wimpy from doing eating so many hamburgers. <laughs> and I can remember him talking about buying bananas there because they was always on the stalk, you know, and they had to cut them off. <laughs> uh, I have to have my memory jog sometimes. <laughs> well, do you know if they participated in any of the, like, soil conservation projects, building ponds and that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, they had uh, terraces built, and probably their ponds was probably built that way, too. Um, most people around here did that, I remember. About how many ponds are on the property today? There's three. Oh, man-made, too? Or yeah, they're man-made. Uh -huh. And so today, what do you do? What's done on the farm? Well, uh, I still have some cows and uh, um, have a garden such as it is, but... Um, <laughs> Any of the original fruit trees still alive? Uh, yes, uh, we have some of the original pecan trees. And uh, I guess that's about all that uh, the original that is here. Uh, when you purchased the farm in the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us a little bit about the structures on the farm in the 70s and any improvements you made oh. through the years? Uh, yeah, of course, we've remodeled the house from top to bottom. And uh, the barns, we've all, we put tin on all of them, but they're still the original barns. Uh, we have, and we built one new barn out here uh, which I use for a garage now. Um, most everything else is really just about the same. Um, well, there was 22 structures on the building on the place. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, uh, Merle's mother and dad uh, belonged to uh, a church that met in the homes. And every fall they would have their church convention here and they set up tents, and I guess you might just call it a regular old tent meeting, you know. And uh, so they had built a lot of buildings around, then they used them for uh, sleeping quarters and stuff, because we tore down a lot of them. But uh, that's uh, what, uh, uh, most of what reason there's so many buildings around here, a lot of them. This one building out here, they used it as their kitchen and it was called the cook house, and we still call it the cook house. <laughs> and what religion was it? And they really didn't have a name. They just uh, met in homes, and their uh, uh, their ministers were called workers, and they went in pairs. It was two women or two women that traveled together. And 22 structures, like probably <laughs> some of the other ones. <laughs> well, that's your, uh, your different outhouses. Scattered yeah. out through the, and then they had working quarters out in the fields, you know, houses. There, there was parts. one little building out here that was yeah. Charlie's house. He was one of the ministers that yeah. come by every night. I mean, that was his house. Was That's his house. Well, there was one down here too called Sadie's house. She was yeah. one of the ladies yeah. there too. They yeah. called it Sadie's house. <laughs> yeah. the, the last convention they had out here, there was about 600 here for yeah. service. But I the, came and stayed stadium. like four days. Four days. The house was completely turned over to the to the group, group uh, except their bedroom, which was back in there, and that was the only thing mm -hmm. that was theirs. And when was the last one? Uh, 70, 70, 73. 73. Well, actually, mm -hmm. that's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. It was the same year that uh, Mr. Hall passed away. They had that fall, they had the last one here. And that was going to be the last one here. They were moving somewhere else. Uh, it wasn't just because you took over. No, right. No, it wasn't just because we took over. <laughs> what well, does the two of you have some memories you want to share of, of your times on the farm? I don't know, we, <laughs> we had to pick up rocks. Rocks, rocks. Every weekend we picked up rocks. Out of the fields? Right? Yes. Okay. yes. This is the rockiest place in the country. <laughs> and what would you do with them when you 
Yeah, um, been dead somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but we had to take them up out of the pasture, take the rocks up out of the pasture. Move them to a gully. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But mostly we were constantly remodeling this house when, mm-hmm. by the time we moved out here. So. We worked on this house seven years before we got it finished. Because they took it down to the original structure because over the years have add room here, room here, and, and nothing was cohesive around it. So it was all taken off around the outside and then put on a little more symmetrically, you know. <laughs> and uh, we started in the basement and went straight up. Yeah. Which, Dug the basement out of yeah. another foot or two, carried yeah. it out in the five gallon buckets mm-hmm. and then carried all the cement and stuff back down and mixed it and poured <laughs> yeah. it down there. I think my senior year of high school, I, I had to get go down the steps, but the, there was a high chair there. There was no steps. You went down the high chair to get down because there was no steps, yes. So. Uh, we made our kids work. They learned a lot, but they really didn't realize how much they had learned until they got out on their own and started fixing their own houses. Yeah. And uh, they all, all th- we got another son, and they all three know how to build. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As opposed to cutting hay and hauling hay. They did that too. They did that too. <laughs> Involved with any 4 H or FFA or anything like that? FFA. The boys were in FFA. Well, we raised, well I had hogs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We pigs is pigs. We had, we had pigs. Show pigs here. Here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where we're in school, that's, that's about it. <laughs> Take them in the county fair? Yep. Mm-hmm. There, Tulsa, Muskogee, Collinsville, different places. Mm-hmm. So. so, Mays County has, this county fair would be where? At Pryor. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest county. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We've got one of the best. Yeah, it's one of fairs. the biggest around. Mm-hmm. Pigs, especially, they have lots of pigs down there. So, uh, FFA, uh, if it wasn't 4 H, then you didn't go to Roundup and Stillwater there mm-hmm. anymore. 4-H. I did that. You did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was in 4 H forever. <laughs> I don't know how many times I went to Roundup and Stillwater. All during high school and grade school, too. Probably from about the time I was about 12 years old, I guess. So you grew uh, up where? Grew about up? five miles south of here. So close to home then. Yeah. I mean, you, if that did tie <laughs> into coming here, then you yeah. didn't have to move from across. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you chose to do all that remodeling instead of just bulldozing it and starting mm-hmm. over? Mm-hmm. We were told that we might as well burn it down. But we decided we weren't going to. So I just thought it was kind of neat. To, I'd always had this idea in the back of my head that I'd like to remodel an old house. So we did. Mm-hmm. So if electricity came in 47, seven, seven, uh, 47. Mm-hmm. and indoor plumbing would have come shortly thereafter? Uh, yeah, they put in a bathroom pretty soon after that. And then uh, it was in uh, probably 56 or 57 we got real water out here which helped a whole lot when my husband and I were first married we built a house up here on the hill going out the driveway and when they dug the turnpike down here they hit a spring that run really really good and the water was so good and so they built a tank down there to catch the water in we piped that up to our house when we built it and we moved into it in 1956. Well, you've been on the property. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> long time. Yeah. Was there a cistern at some mm-hmm. point? Uh, yes. Uh, Granddad South dug the cistern out here. It's still out here where that pump is up there. You can probably see it out the window there. And uh, he dug. It's hand dug cistern, I think. And. Uh, in times when we needed water, we would use that water. If the water wasn't on, you know, or cut off or something, we'd use water out of there. Did your husband ever talk about the first tractor that would, they would have had? 
no, I don't, I don't remember, but I think we've still got it. <laughs> uh, I think that C out there, that C's. final C, I think is the first tractor that Granddad ever bought. Mm -hmm. Mm, well, if, they were, if they worked, 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 what was fun? What did you do? <laughs> well, they didn't have any electricity, so they didn't have yeah. a radio, or they didn't have—they didn't believe they in did, a radio. They didn't believe in radio or TVs out here. Uh uh Well, Nothing. and they didn't even have telephone no. either. Until after we got married, there wasn't a telephone out here. So. Well, Connie played the piano. Yeah. By ear, and she was taught by her mother, and mm. what she said was that uh, I think all of them could play a musical instrument mm -hmm. of some sort. So I guess, I was thinking about that yesterday, I guess that's what they did. They got together and played music. Mm -hmm. But she played the piano every day. And she died when she was 92, and she played every day that she felt like it. She, um, that was just one of her things. And she taught music too, I think. Um, I don't know what Granddad did about all I can remember him doing was sitting out in the yard uh, either reading the newspaper or reading his bible so mm -hmm. of course in the spring he had his garden and and uh, looked after his cows mostly um, well, since they participated in the soil conservation and terraces did they did county agents come out and do you know i don't know um I wasn't around here then. <laughs> well, even when you were living here, though, were you involved with the like, home demonstration or homemakers clubs or anything? Like uh, that? No, I never have been. No. And and Miss Hall wasn't either. So she never drove. No, she never drove a car. Um, she didn't drive because somebody once tried to tell her how to drive. So she just she did drive at one time, but then she just decided. Yeah. Then when Merle's sister got to be sixteen and got her license, yeah. like she just took over the driving, and this all never drove again. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hall was a was a mechanic, and when they were first married, they when they lived in Chelsea a while, and he worked at one of the garages up there. He was a good mechanic. He'd gone oh, to no. uh, Wilberton and went to college down there on the GI Bill no. to learn how to be a mechanic. No. So. No. <laughs> when, when you moved here, uh, no. you're talking about remodeling the home no. uh, when y'all were attending high school. Uh, did you have other chores that you had to do? I, I, I raised bottle calves. I had to get up and feed them in the morning. Mom fed them at noon, and I fed them at night. Um, just mess with the hogs. All I did. Pigs, mostly. Pigs. They were already in high school when we moved out here, so they went right into FFA and and we got him some pigs and some calves. And, and was he near a, a smaller high school from yes. where you came from? Was that a, <laughs> yes. a farm yeah. very much. It's very different. I came from a high school that had 600 in my class to one that had 36. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's a big difference. Yeah. Good way, I guess, too. Yeah. Merle graduated from Adair, too. Mm -hmm. He, he went into the Army. Uh, this all happened before we were married, and he got out in 55, and then uh, he went to school on the GI Bill, too, at Oklahoma School of Accountancy in Tulsa. And uh, he also went to the farm school that they had after we moved out here that the veterans had at Adair. He went over there for a while. He refereed basketball. We are big sports fans. <laughs> All of us. When the kids were little, they played ball and my husband played ball and I just got them where they had to go and be. <laughs> so. yeah. 
and Steve played football at Adair, and our other son, he was he played basketball mostly. You played basketball too, didn't you? Yeah. Kay played basketball, softball. I'm just a fan. I never played anything. <laughs> I know a lot of farm kids couldn't do that because they, they had to get home yeah. to do the mm -hmm. chores so, and had to ride the bus, so if there wasn't a way to get home, mm -hmm. yeah. they yeah. couldn't participate in That's the way my husband played uh, basketball at Adair, and uh, he, he either had to walk home or hitch a ride home, but or they had it, I don't know, maybe a practice set where he could ride the bus home, but he had friends too that brought him home, so... One or two of his friends had a car. I've heard him talk about that. <laughs> so. Well, what were holidays like? Big. <laughs> uh, Where would the they family still get together? Well, uh, after we moved out here, a lot of times they came here. I have a brother and a sister that live down the road here, and they have families, and we would all gather here. I think there's about 50 of us now. And uh, the last few years we've gathered in Adair at the community center but we used to come here at the house or we would go to my mom and dad's and, you know, we always have big dinners on Thanksgiving and Christmas um, cut the tree on the farm yeah we have yes here don't anymore but <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, uh, Remember we butchered a cow one one winter fall. I was really little. It's only one I ever saw. I mean, Dad butchered it. So if we you were younger, but you were younger. You would be coming here for your grandparents. Yeah, every your weekend. Grandparents. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember much about your grandmother in the kitchen? She baked on Saturday mornings. She baked cinnamon rolls and bread. Cinnamon rolls had about a half inch of brown sugar in the bottom of the pan that you could just pour <laughs> and uh, bread I don't know she made about half a dozen loaves of bread that was their sandwich bread mm -hmm. um, she did her wash on uh, Monday and uh, Tuesday I think she ironed Friday we went to town if you we we took turns we would stay two weeks out here at a time and uh, in the summertime and we could we go to town we could buy one toy and that was our basically our Christmas toy in the middle of the summer that was it <laughs> so, uh, but she uh, she stayed at the house and she the house was hers she cleaned she had flowers all the way around the house any place she could put a flower, she had a flower. I know she had 70 or 80 different kinds of African violets in this house. So it just, flowers were her thing. A big thing for the boys to do is granddad always took them to the sale barn mm -hmm. at Benita whenever they come in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Granddad had tea time at nine o'clock in the morning. And then it was it actually tea? Coffee. No, coffee. coffee. <laughs> he saucered his coffee. Uh, but it was tea time. And then at 3 o'clock he'd have it come back in from the whatever he was doing. Come in and have tea time. He would put it, he used instant coffee. And he would put the coffee in and, you know, make the coffee. Then he poured Milnot in it until it poured over the cup. And then he saucered it. <laughs> Interesting technique. <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was. <laughs> yeah. uh, and would he share any pearls of wisdom with you if you got to tag along with him? Oh, I don't know. He called him Jerkaleg. <laughs> yeah, that was Jerkaleg. That was his nickname. Yeah, was Jerkaleg. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What all did you do with Granddad? Whatever. Whatever he did, you yeah. did, didn't you? Mm. Always working on something. <laughs> so. Teach you how to do anything in particular? I drive a tractor, I guess. <laughs> I'll go tractor, rake. It was all hay. Bell and hay stuff. 
uh, I it seems to me that then Granddad always wants you boys to come out when he was bailing hay, because okay. he just thought you needed to know how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't want, yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> he paid us one summer for hay. We got a dollar seventy four a piece for bailing hay, and that was the only time he ever gave us any money. Total, <laughs> total. A piece, yeah. A piece. That was total. Yeah. <laughs> Dad said we ought to be glad to get that because he didn't give money out. <laughs> I guess some of the old timers called him the old Dutchman because he was very stingy. Stingy is the word. With his money. <laughs> very. Yeah. Well, we would, he, would he? I'm sorry. Would he ever hide uh, money anywhere? Did he believe in banks? Trust black banks? Mm. I don't know. Uh, they had a bank account. That's yeah. all I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know. It seemed like. Uh, Miss Hall always had money to get whatever she wanted, which she didn't want very much, but whatever she wanted, you know. But, um, did she sell <laughs> cream and chicken, uh, eggs and... At one time they did, yeah. yeah. One time they had chickens out here. And, well, that's when we were first married. We, They had chickens out here. And I remember him taking care of them and separating the eggs and stuff and getting them ready to sell. Uh, I don't know whether they ever, I don't think they ever sold cream because I don't remember them ever separating the milk. Mm. But I did hear once Granddad had all that milk and it was during the war, mm -hmm. something about he couldn't sell the milk and he left it out on the road or something. And if it disappeared overnight, it disappeared because he couldn't sell it, but he didn't want to throw it away. Yeah. And I don't remember what the whole story, but it, he wanted to give it away, but he wasn't really allowed to because of... Yeah, I think that's this. what it was. He was yeah. he couldn't give it away. The government wouldn't let him, but he set it out there, and if it disappeared, why well, he knew it went to somebody that needed it. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, did they have hired help, or was there enough? Or was it mm -hmm. family? I don't remember them ever hiring anybody to do any, unless it was to like bale the hay or something. But uh, most usually when they uh, were here, the neighbors all got together and, you know, rotated around to do the crops and stuff, the hay. And, and Then the uh, workers were here too. Yeah. The missionaries would come and stay for a week, two weeks at a time and help them out too. Mm -hmm. They needed help. Well, if a piece of equipment broke down, would he know how to fix it or? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, he did all of his own mechanic work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that was something he had passed on to. Uh, I can't remember all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do anything now, so <laughs> he can work on anything he wants to. <laughs> With these new ones, I don't know. It's probably harder uh, though. Uh, than <laughs> Just last week, you came out here and fixed four things for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. back in the Depression days, did they tell stories of hobos coming through or anything like I, that? I, yeah, I've heard Miss Hall talk about that. You know, people come by to want beg for food for they do something for them. You know, but uh, not. I don't think it's too much. I, after they put the turnpike in, a lot of times it was people that would stop here if they had trouble. And then they got CBs and nobody did that anymore. Now with the cell phones, nobody does it. So there's been a few stops since we've been out here, but it's been a long time since anybody's came. So when would the turnpike come in? I, I'm not uh, sure. It was 1957 is when they finished it, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. As yeah. kids, we used to sit out in the front yard <laughs> with uh, Connie, our grandmother, and play the game, watch the cars go by the turnpike, and we'd, we'd get one side, she'd get the other, and count the cars. We could sit there for a long time without seeing a car go by. <laughs> <laughs> now you couldn't count them if you <laughs> tried. Oh. Um, yeah. One of them would take buses, and yeah. one of them would take cars or trucks, yeah, so, you know, each one of them had their thing they were going to count. <laughs> 
And she always, she seemed to always have a couple of pet squirrels that she fed out here. Sammy and Sambo, I think, yeah. is her name. She would name them. Mm. They'd come up, eat. They'd come down off the roof every day to eat. And she got them where they, they would even come up in her lap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, they sat out in the yard a lot in the summertime to be, because it was cooler. No air conditioning. No mm -hmm. air conditioning. I remember when they put the first air conditioner in this house. Merle's brother was here from California, and Merle and Bud decided they was going to get their mom and dad an air conditioner. Well, Granddad wasn't going to have anything of it, you know. He, well, it cost too much and cost too much to run. But they put the air conditioner in anyway. Well, the next time we were out here, Granddad paid Merle for the air conditioner. <laughs> But he still didn't really like it. He'd go outside and sit. But now his mother really liked it. So. <laughs> they sleep outside some in the in the summer. I imagine they probably did, and you know, back before that, I don't remember his mom and dad doing that. You know, but I remember doing that when I was a kid, though. <laughs> and about bath time was probably interesting too. Back. Oh in yeah. <laughs> back in yeah. Mm -hmm. Number three, I don't know what they did here because after I came, they've always had a bathroom. So, <laughs> yeah, I imagine once a week at least. <laughs> Any major struggles with the farm? Anything that that you had to work through that way, or just because mm -hmm. it was. Supplemental income, it really wasn't any. I don't remember anything particular that, uh, I've, or anything that I've heard them talk about anyway. But when they stopped um, the dairy, what was the reasoning for that? Well, um, let's see, Granddad wouldn't have been old enough for Social Security. I don't know, it might have been just because all the kids was leaving home. I don't know. He didn't have anybody to help him. Federal regulations. <laughs> yeah. Into. Yeah, that probably. Mm -hmm. Most, I don't know really why he quit. And about when yeah. he, do you know about when he quit? Yeah, 1947. Oh, he quit sorry, mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Just got tired mm -hmm. of it again. Yeah. It was a lot of work. I don't know. I said he never had a dairy. And then. Uh, they sold all their cattle in, in 47. Steve is, a, is the mayor of Adair, and the people have been giving him a lot of old newspapers and things to put up in the community center over there. And he got a newspaper here a while back that had a sale bill in it for uh, uh, James South's estate and none of the family knew that they had a sale here for him but it's in the paper it was quite interesting Merle's dad was the one that was the what do they call him the agent or something yeah. whatever it is of it but sold off all their stuff um, Farm, farming yeah uh, equipment, and equipment and there's some house stuff too furniture and stuff too that and like there was more than one of a cook stove, so you know that other people had to bring things in. Probably the other kids brought some of their stuff in to sell too at the same time. But uh, none of them ever remember that. Uh, and of course, Merle's mother was, uh, she had already passed away, so she didn't, we couldn't ask her anymore. So his mother and dad didn't uh, talk about things very much. Things that happened. and. The day that Merle and I got married, we came back here. His sister had fixed a cake for us, and we were here. We got married in Prague, the courthouse, so we didn't have a wedding. And uh, we came back here, and his dad said, well, this is our anniversary, too. And we did not know it, and none of the kids knew that they had been married on December the 1st. So. <laughs> this is about where we usually ask them, how did, how did you meet your husband? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I met him at a New Year's Eve dance in Pryor at the community building. They We had neighbors down there usually got together and they had a big dance on New Year's Eve. And uh, him and one of his friends was there. 
I don't know why, but uh, uh, then on, uh, let's see, that was, I think that was on a Saturday night. It seemed like one day the next week, he came to Pryor and came in the drugstore where I was working and asked me for a date. And I remember hearing his dad say, I wondered why he was so anxious to get to Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> he had just come home from uh, California, I think it was. He, he uh, farmed with his brother out there in the summertime while he was going to high school. And he had just, it was in, of course in the wintertime, and he had just come home. And uh, I don't know, we went together for three years before we got married. He was in the Army for two of that, so. <laughs> We got, he got out on November the 9th of 1955, and we got married on December the 1st. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. And then you moved to a house here? Uh, we lived Not here. One, we lived here yeah. with his mom and dad for nine months. And then we had built our house up here on the step up, up the hill there as you're going out the driveway. And uh, we lived there for three or about three years, I think. Uh, and we moved to Tulsa when uh, our youngest son was a year old. We lived there for nine years in the same house, and uh, he was transferred to Atlanta. And we lived there three years. Come back to Tulsa and lived about two and a half years, and his dad passed away, and then we moved out here in 1974. Well, this is quite a bit different from Atlanta. <laughs> Just a little bit. A little bit. I've been back down there once, and I don't want to live there anymore. <laughs> Although it was nice while we were there, but... <laughs> well, then, what is it about this place that you're so attached to it? I don't know. I don't know, really. Other than it's just been in the family so long, and I just didn't want anybody else to have it. Mm -hmm. and I don't think Merle did either. Well, then the next question is, who gets it next? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the better one of them take it. <laughs> AJ will take it, she says. <laughs> so. so, I mean, do you have in mind who, what will happen to it next in the, like, the next no. 100 years? What? I have no idea. You know, you don't know. Times change so anymore, you know, but I'll, I will lead it to the kids. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Our other son has uh, bought a couple of pieces of land from us that uh, were not part of the original part. But mm. well, with the yeah. turnpike so close, you don't necessarily have to make a living on the farm. Anymore. No, uh -uh. You live here and work. Mm -hmm. Oh, something else. When we were first married, uh, Merle's uncle had uh, a piece of land. It was. Uh, 57 acres or so down south in the next section down. And the turnpike had come in and taken most of his land, so he was going to move. And there was 17 acres on this side of the turnpike and about 40 on the other side. And he wanted to sell it. And he said, told Merle, he says, I want you to have that land. Merle says, I don't have any money. He said, we just got married. We didn't have any money to buy anything with. And, but you're going to buy that land. You want it? He sold it to us for five hundred dollars. So, and uh, Rick, our other son, has bought that seventeen acres on this side, and Kay has the forty on the other side now. So, um, but we had when we moved to Tulsa, we sold it to. A, I guess that was when we got ready to move out here. I think this guy across the street from us wanted some land. And so we had sold that to him, and he decided he didn't want it anymore a few years ago, so Kate bought it back, so it's still in the family. So. Mm. I guess we should ask the two of you that question, then what is it about <laughs> this place that you're, you're attached to? It's probably similar. That's right, it's similar. We come out here every, almost every weekend. Yeah. And, uh, of course, mm -hmm. we lived out here for a while, and then we come out here every weekend, and it's just, so you probably walked across every, every inch of it. Yeah. It's about, yeah. You couldn't get lost then. No. 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 I don't think so. <laughs> Not if you picked up all the rocks. <laughs> I used to always tell people when Merle got mad at us. He picked, we had us pick up rocks. 
Oh, yeah. Back yeah. Pick up. You load them back and pick up and unload them by hand. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh. <laughs> I think you remember about Granddaddy having all the dogs ride with him on the forklift, don't you? <laughs> mm. A lot of family pets through the years. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's always been dogs here, and we've got too many now. <laughs> well, we appreciate your time. Well, I mean, it's been fun to hear about about this. I'm sitting in this <laughs> 100 plus year old house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.